This is an excerpt from a conversation with Emil Jacobs, Yuan Li, and Nathan Lewis, moderated by Andrew Revkin, brought to you by the Chemical Heritage Foundation's annual TT Chow Symposium. Uh, most recently, Mark Linus has proposed that nuclear energy will be vital for humans in this century, but if skyrocketing costs, not necessarily stigmas about safety, have uh, been a deterrent to the proliferation of this energy form, what can the government uh, engineers and researchers do uh, to uh, bring down costs in this, uh, in, in this field? Any, uh, Exxon, it's really not Exxon's field, but bringing down the cost of a technology uh, I don't know if you want to just weigh in on that. Yeah, the or, the, or thing, getting at that issue of how risk and cost are related. Yeah, I, I think that you know that the question around risk and cost is, is a key one. Um, I was at a, at a meeting a, about a year ago, and we had our chairman and CEO talking to a bunch of technology people in the audience, and uh, he said that uh, a couple weeks earlier, I was at a, at a meeting, and someone asked him, "What do you do for a job?" And he said, I basically thought they knew what I did for a job. But he said, I thought about it for a second. And he said, you know, I am the chief risk management engineer at ExxonMobil. And I think that, you know, when you talk about energy, when you talk about the nuclear industry, when you talk about a lot of these type of industries, risk management rises right to the top of your list of things to do well. And you've got you can argue whether safety is in with risk management, but it's, but it's really risk management. And I think that's the, the core of your question, is how do you get the risk down to an acceptable level without having the cost skyrocket? So it's that balance of risk and cost that needs to be managed. And technology can help you. Operating experience can help you. But those are the two big drivers for how you get risk down while maintaining a cost which will be competitive with other options. But risk management is a key question. And by the way, one of the big issues there is um, the, some of the most momentous events that related energy and risk in recent years were what you call low probability but high, big bad outcome kind of events. The, the BP uh, Gulf Gusher was uh, the kind of thing that there was a lot of experience drilling in deep water and everyone kind of got perhaps comfortable with a certain sense of improbability and then kaboom. And of course, as you heard, Fukushima, uh, it wasn't the earthquake so much as the tsunami that was the un unrecognized threat to that power plant. And uh, as recently as the mid-2000s, as I wrote on uh, Dot Earth, Japan's rules for siting of power plants and for key facilities within these nuclear power plants did not in integrate tsunami risk, even though it's a coastal <laughs> facility. Yeah. So, so get it, how do we get better at those low probability, bad outcome risks uh, is, is, I think, a part of this, too. I think in the case of Japan, because Tokyo Electric is monopolizing the electricity, right. so there are lots of problems because of the monopoly and really not competing. And when you look at the disaster, Fukushima earthquake is the Richter scale 9 and killed 20,000 people. And that's really unfortunate. So many lives is lost. But then you compare the Haiti earthquake, which the scale is only seven. Right. Well, every step means uh, 30 times energy release. So Haiti uh, earthquake is energy release only 1,000 times less. But the people killed is 200,000 people killed, 10 times more people killed. Yeah. So that disaster is really just the natural uh, phenomena is the human preparation in human society. So many, many of the things we, we're talking about are really not just the science and technology, it's the society involved. That's mm. absolutely right.